Hello, my name is Beth Collington. I'm the Director of Digital Materials and Laboratory Equipment with Zahn Dental, the laboratory division of Henry Schein. I'm here today talking to Daniel Alter, Master Dental Technician, Executive Editor of Inside Dental Technology Magazine, and Professor of Restorative Dentistry at the City College of New York. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Beth. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Under the circumstances, of course, but uh, everybody's healthy and that's what matters. That is absolutely what matters. Daniel, I really appreciate you taking some time today to talk to us. One of the things I wanted to know, as well as I'm sure many people in the industry, is how do you currently see the state of the business being affected by COVID-19? And what are you hearing? Yeah, so that's a very good question, Beth, and thank you for asking. Um, so certainly it's, it's unprecedented times. It's, it's difficult times that we're all facing and laboratories are alike. Uh, there's um, quite a few laboratories that have either completely closed down for pause for the time. Uh, others have arranged different types of uh, emergent only services and, and have brought in some technicians sparingly where they're, they're keeping social distance and so on and so forth in order to uh, complete the emergency. Um, others have been laid off, some have been furloughed, so there's um, there's a whole stew of, of different scenarios. Um, it's, you know, one thing I can say is that it is, our industry is a, is a very resilient industry. Um, it's something that, you know, we are currently, what I'm experiencing, what I'm, you know, it's, it's more of like a, um, a mindfulness, of, for lack of better words, where you know, this time um, is out of our control. There's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can, but what we can do is how we respond to it. So it, I consider it almost like as a pause and an opportunity and a positive opportunity to really be able to reflect and take a look at what's happening, what we want things to be like when we emerge and how are we growing, how are we expanding? And, and I fully wholeheartedly believe that the, the way to do that is by really learning, educating, and expanding your horizon so that this way we can plan out when we do emerge out of this, what, what the actionable items are. How can we make our visions what they should be and what we want them to be like? Um, so I know there's a lot of folks currently that are, um, you know, a little in despair and understandably so. It's, it's, it's a tough time and I'm not going to deny it. And hopefully we're we're on our way out of it, um, and but there'll be opportunities once we emerge out of it. There'll be different ways, and and I really wholeheartedly believe, and, and this is something that I want to share with the industry. It's 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 a mindset. It's a way of looking at things. There's a reactive and a proactive, and I subscribe more to the proactive rather than the reactive, and to really be able to reflect internally and see what it is that we can do better as an industry. What it is that we can do better as a laboratory. Where it is that we want things to you know, things to emerge in a way that we will be stronger and better for it after this experience has all passed. Absolutely. With the laboratory industry opening um, in staggered, right, by states, we're seeing, you know, different states with different timelines for opening. You know, have you heard from labs specifically on any of the challenges that they're immediately facing on this recovery period or any comments on that topic? Yeah, absolutely. So we see throughout the, the nation that labs are opening up in a, a different, and at the time of this taping, I, I don't believe there that has been lifted as of yet. I, I know May 15th is uh, when a lot of people are looking at to, to lift and, and certainly, well, I should say May 1st rather than not May 15th. That's very New York and May 15th, but um, the rest of the world, it seems like May 1st has been, so there are many laboratories that are strategizing and trying to see what um, what it is and how it is that they can come back from this unfortunate, um, unprecedented times. Um, it's really geographically dependent, but one thing I just want to, you know, really reflect upon and really share is that, you know, our work and, and what I don't want people to, to get into is going into the laboratory and expecting a tremendous amount of work. And hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully that will be the case, but in reality, we are very dependent on the dentists and their patients specifically. So a lot of the work that's going to come down to laboratories is going to depend on when their dentist clients are opening up. Mm -hmm. And secondly, when their patients are going to be comfortable in visiting that dentist in order to perform that dental work. So, you know, laboratory owners, as anxious as we are to get out and be able to re resume business as usual, 
the new norm may never be business as usual. The new, you know, it may take a little bit of time and that's okay because again, it's how we react to it. It's how, what we do with that time when we come back. So how do we position ourselves that when the work and the work, I promise you will come back because my father may rest in peace always used to say one thing that the world always needs is teeth because people need to eat. There's plenty of people in the world. So I have no doubt that the work will come back. It's just, it's the mindset of when we come back. So if, if it is that when the laboratory decides to get back in May 1st, look around, look at the laboratory. If the work is not quite there yet, and it will be, it'll come, um, see where you can improve things, whether it's efficiency, whether it's a workflow, whether it's a processes, whether it's internal or external, whatever the case may be, use this time for our advantage rather than just waiting for work to appear because that will appear, but we wanna be stronger and better for it when it does. I completely, completely agree with you. Excellent sentiment. Um, Daniel, you're also the professor of the restorative dentistry program for dental technology um, at the City College. Mm -hmm. um, I know you have implemented and been working very hard over the last few years to create you know, a digital program for students in the industry. Um, how has this affected the work at the school and what your students are currently experiencing? So currently, quite honestly, I mean, we uh, in mid-March, um, you know, New York City was completely in, in lockdown um, and that included the college. And, and certainly we we've had to pivot rather quickly from a face to face personal uh, teaching modality to a online distance modality. Um, and it, it happened like that. We needed to do it really fast and develop uh, curriculum really fast. And, you know, the, the faculty as well as the adjuncts and everything really rolled up their sleeves and really got into it. And we, we had literally five days to transform everything from face to face to, to distance learning. So Absolutely. that's what we've been doing. And in fact, nobody's allowed into the building um, at the college other than obviously essential workers like security and so on and so forth, but no faculty or students are able to uh, enter the building. So we, quickly had to figure out different ways of being able to still hit the learning objectives so that they can successfully um, graduate and become gainfully employed in a productive manner in our community. So we've you know, worked together as a team and we've put together um, different projects and different assignments and you know, a lot of, um, it's funny, being on, as a distance online, um, it becomes a, um, you know, I'm, I'm engaging more with students through this form, um, whether it's through Zoom, Collaborate, or whatever have you, than ever before. There's, uh, you know, there's a, a sense of communication that it has actually enhanced. So in a way, it, you know, again, I always try to look at the silver linings, but I think the engagement with the students have become significantly better through this mode because at any point in time, any convenience, we can always engage with them, we can always explain and go further into the lesson plans. Excellent, that's excellent. Daniel, for students that have graduated high school, people who are incoming into these programs, you know, what are your parting words and thoughts to people considering coming into our industry today and any advice to them? So my, my words are, this is an incredible, incredible industry. It's, it's a very rewarding, I've, I've had, nothing but the most amazing career uh, and continue to have an amazing career. It's, it's like with any, any other profession, what you put in is what you're going to get out type of thing. And, you know, but the opportunity is here. It's, it's a unique profession, different than any others, certainly different than anything in, in dentistry because it's the, it's the true entrepreneurial uh, type of field and discipline, which is what ultimately attracted me to this profession. Uh, because you're able to, with, with um, business acumen and, and some smarts, you're able to navigate through and, and be able to create a, a really fruitful career. Um, so what I tell students is if you, if you like to work with your hands, if you, you know, if it's something that, you know, and, and certainly today with CAD, if you're into being able to design things, no, no cases alike, although certainly the processes and the protocols are the same, but you're able to work on something unique and individual every single time. And ultimately you're creating smiles and function for people that may very well be your you know, there's somebody's aunt, uncle, grandfather, brother, sister. There's some human being that's out there that you're bettering their livelihood or life for it, and therefore you're you're achieving a better livelihood in the process. So it's an incredibly rewarding field. It has its challenges. I'm not going to deny it, but it's certainly the 
overall the the better or the benefits of of this industry is remarkable not to mention the community uh that we're in the it's it's the most passionate and the most connected community uh i think in the world quite honestly because we really stick together and a lot of it is a testament of through this time what we've seen on social media and what we've seen laboratories do how they have rolled up their sleeves and how they've really dove into helping out with PPE, whoever could, and just the, the constant communication among the community, particularly the support that we have among each other. So without a doubt, I would highly, highly, highly suggest for anybody looking to, in high school, looking for a career to enter this profession. It's absolutely fantastic and incredibly rewarding. I 100% agree. Daniel, that was incredibly well said. Uh, thank you for your passion, your commitment, and time. And I know time is little of what you have right now because it sounds like you've been very very busy during this lockdown so mm -hmm. thank you for taking a few minutes to talk to us and Zan, and thank you for everything you do for everybody in this industry have a great great day my pleasure and thank you beth and thank you zon for doing everything that you're doing for the industry as well thank you